all right everyone welcome back welcome back to another 90 day recap chat happily ever after 90 day fiance is a show that's a reality show that follows couples one from the u.s one from another country and it follows their journey and love their relationship but also the ups and downs um the cultural differences the language barriers the legal issues when it comes to trying to get a 90 day um, visa and the K-1 visa in order to get married and to seal the deal with your partner and learning and growing a new culture being able to adjust to that on both sides so that's 90 day fiance this particular um series is a spinoff of the original 90 that is called happily ever after following some of the couples after marriage some that have somewhat solidified their relationship and are heading toward marriage so that's 90 day happily ever after and we're going to get into today's episode where i'll say the recent episode as far as when i'm taping we're going to start with liz and moms liz mom and ed and i said liz moms and ed so Liz's mom goes and helps her pick up the rest of her items because the two of them broke up. They've been kind of off and on for the past few years. They were supposed to get married in two months. Ed, you know, surprisingly cancels the wedding on her. And she has to, you know, uproot everything, leave, start over again. Her, her daughter was involved, so now she kind of made a connection and now that connection is being broken as well it was very painful for her she was crying and emotional but she's glad she has a mom's there to help her to finalize this part of her life get the rest of her things and be done but mom's not going to go out quietly she's not going to just let ed get away with the way that you know he's kind of been handling things and probably handling all of his relationships since the 90 day franchise um I won't say began, but since he's been a part of it, um, she's kind of saying some of the things that I think many of us were thinking about him kind of being kind of a jerk. Um, she said he lied about all the things he would do for his, for her daughter and how he would protect her and treat her like a princess. Um, all the different things he said to her, you know, some of the things people say to mom to just get mom on their side. He said those things. And she basically said, you know, he's going to die alone, basically, because just the, his lifestyle, the way he treats women, the way he chooses to live his life. And basically, he's never going to find anyone, you know, as good as her daughter. I mean, of course, moms are going to say that, but I think moms has a point. So they're getting their, they're getting her stuff. The house is a mess and you know mom says what she has to say i think mom's a lot bolder with what she says and her attitude and you know i just appreciated mom just being real about the whole situation and being there and liz did too she didn't always have the greatest relationship with her mom but she's glad she's there for her now and it's a support system during this time and this breakup i mean I can see how painful it is, especially a couple months before a possible marriage. And you're thinking you're gonna get married in two months and everything is just kind of pulled from under you. And then you have to regroup, start over, get all your things, move to another state. Sometimes you need moms on your side. I mean, it's a blessing and a gift to have moms. Another reason why, you know, we always need mom. You know, there's gonna be an instance where we're gonna need mom. Some people may argue, should mom get in the middle of this scenario? I mean, it is over, so it's not like they're trying to keep things together. And she does need that support. So when it comes to this scenario, I'm saying, you know, moms did a good thing being there and being helping her to put closure to this part of her life. And honestly, I do believe that it did her a favor. All right, we're going to go to Mike and Angela. Now, Michael, he is from an African country. Angela is from the U.S. She's got some years on him. Uh, So she finds out, you know, they have been having some complications. He's supposed to be completing his interview to get the K-1 visa 
they've been i think they've been married for like seven years and the interview process still has not gone through well and she's thinking something is fishy even her daughter says so so she's really gonna try to start looking into things and at this point she just takes his phone and it's like give me your phone starts looking through it and sees some evidence that looks pretty suspect um he has a group called paradise men which he's the admin to she takes the phone she throws a drink in his face she leaves he chases her down probably because he wants his phone more than he wants her um she goes back to the hotel and she looks through his phone again she finds this group called paradise men that, that he runs and it's women in there it's, it's possible american women that can be married that want to be married so she thinks this is kind of like a scam put on these american older women many of them are older as well and she happens to be caucasian and so does one of the ladies that she sees in the phone so i don't know if that's their main target but their target is american women she then continues to look through his phone and sees more damning evidence something about he was searching for life insurance policies and you know what happens with someone's life insurance policy and how it can be paid out so now she's thinking does he want to knock her off like what was his plan what was his scheme angela's been bold outspoken person in this show and this franchise so she wasn't playing she wasn't missing words and she's really um Sus suspecting that he is a full-on scammer and she has a lot of evidence but she says she wants to get a detective to go further um to see really what's going on is she blowing up some of these things in her own head is this really a full-on scam i'm thinking that yeah it's a scam so i think she's going in the right direction with that and I hope she gets justice and gets able to get out of this scenario uh, unscathed, but I don't know. He even um, shared her tax returns from 2022 with this group, so he's putting her information at risk. Um, it's a crazy thing, so I don't know what's going on, but if you guys remember the African princes that used to email random people and you know try to connect with them in on a romantic way or just say you know i'm an african prince um i need this this amount of money and i'll pay you back because i'm an african prince i know some of you guys were in generation and you recall these emails that were sent it's definitely giving me that vibe of what is kind of going on with mike and angela so Angela, I hope you can get out of this unscathed. And if Mike is really doing this, I'm glad that he's being uncovered. I'm glad that his little game is being uncovered. And hopefully no other people uh, will get scammed. And those that are, un are already getting scammed, hopefully they can find out that information and be free of it. This was a crazy episode, but it was a good one. Gino and Jasmine. Um, last time Jasmine revealed that, you know, Gino has always had an issue being intimate with her because he has a connection with porn the porn is his partner the porn is the other person in the relationship so to speak so after pulling that information out they're still trying to make this uh, relationship a go uh, when it comes to the pageant that he's supposed to be signing her up for money is an issue for Gino and he's kind of off he's always been saying money's been an issue but he's always been giving in to her financial demands but in this last instance he um, they're going to buy a new washing machine because they need it and she's like well you can get this washing machine but you can't help me be a part of this pageant which is gonna uplift my spirits I've been going through a whole lot of things lately with family I can't have my kids here because of the whole scenario of how you set up the visa process so all these things are a strain on me and this pageant is really going to give me some confidence it's going to give me a purpose because i'm just here in america kind of following your lead i left my life for you and i need you to do this so um he said you know i talked to my uncle earlier and he finally convinced me to pay this fee because they were kind of up 
up in the air about it and she was upset about it so he paid the fee and she's happy about it but he's like well now that i paid this fee i'm gonna need you to do some things i'm gonna need you to do x y and z i'm gonna need you to be not argue with me and not say demeaning things to me and basically she's like well you know a real man doesn't have these lists of demands he just provides for his family for his woman for his people and you know he doesn't throw it in her face and say well since i got this for you then you do this for me and you know i could kind of agree with what she was saying a lot of times i'm annoyed by jasmine's whining gino seems to look like the guy that's just taking all of her stuff and she's just a loud whiny woman but as we've been seeing with recent events gino is not you know that great of a guy he's you know, we, we I saw some things earlier that he wasn't that great, but Jasmine's whining kind of overshadowed, you know, his issues, but now his issues are taking forefront. And I do agree that, you know, a man shouldn't throw, throw money in a woman's face and expect things in return. You're not a prostitute. You're not a, a hooker in, in so many words. I mean, you're not paying... You're not paying for this person to do certain things and be a certain way in your life. You're just being a person taking care of your spouse. And I may have taken a little bit far with the hooker prostitute comment, but yeah, you don't pay to play when it comes to marriage. I mean, you take what you get and Gino should have never, you know, succumbed to all the things that Jasmine was whining about if he wasn't able to continue to give her those things. I mean, she pushed him and pushed him and got him to do it. I mean, I would have never folded. I would have never been bended, if that's a word. Bent. I would have never bent. That's right. <laughs> but again, like I was talking about another couple on 90 Day in Paradise, never, never come into something you know spoiling your partner or trying to put on a front of what you really aren't because you're not going to be able to keep that up and your relationship's foundation is not going to be solid because you came in under false pretenses i mean just be who you truly are and that basically will weed out the people that should be in your life and those that shouldn't be but um jasmine's got a lot to deal with and she's standing up for herself and she's being a little less whiny and i'm really appreciating appreciating that about you jasmine so i hope you continue forward i don't know how you're gonna deal with gino i don't know how you're gonna put him in his place but you know gino got mad when she said that and he you know basically was saying she needs to be more gentle and not be a, the b word you know he was trying to really make her feel some type of way but she was like well if that's the type of woman that you think I should be, then why did you marry me? Basically, you knew what you were getting into. You knew she was whiny and demanding, and now you want her to change after marriage. Um, That's not how it works. So another learning lesson here from our friend to 90 Day Fiance. This happily ever after. Is it always happily ever after? It is a question mark at the end of that title. Now let's hit Robin, Sophie, and the mom. The mom is back. Mom is kind of a theme in this episode. Of course, we have two moms that are fending for their girls. And in this scenario, Rob and Sophie have been on the outs. They haven't been intimate with each other. Um, She's been staying with her friend who's a lesbian and Sophie is bisexual. But she said she never explored it, but she wasn't honest about that. Uh, she's not doing anything with her friend. She really does want to be with Rob, but they just keep getting butting heads. Um, to me, Rob can just be insensitive to the to the emotions of a woman, especially a young lady that's 24. Um, they, you can be really emotional and sensitive at that time. You're young. Um, he's in his 30s. I feel like he needs to kind of figure out how to be a man, how to be gentle when needed, and how to be, you know, 
strong and a man's man when needed. You know, when you talk to your woman, I think you should do it in a different way than when you talk to your guy friends or other guys. Um, that's just, you have to kind of learn that, especially again, this is your wife. This is your person forever. So you can't be harsh with her feelings and her emotions. And sometimes you can't just be cut and dry and up front. You have to kind of finesse it a little bit, you know, if you want to be okay with the wifey, not to say that men have to bow to wifey and do everything that she wants, but you have to be in tune with her emotions and with the woman that you chose to be in your life. And if you can't do that, then you probably shouldn't have chosen that person. So this is, um, she's trying to reconnect with Rob. It's kind of a confrontation. Um, she brings her mom to kind of, you know, in a way, try to put him in check. But she may have made a bad choice. And she realizes that because her mom is very hot-headed. Rob is somewhat hot, hot-headed as well. He is too, but... He comes in the door trying to be nice and cool and chill. But he, like he said, he can only go so far before he goes off. And mom, she's already going off on him. It's understandable that her daughter is being hurt by this person, um, emotionally hurt by him. And she's trying to protect her, her daughter. But she's had a, a little bit of drinks in her. Um, she's upset. She's angry. So Sophie has to separate the two. Um, mom has to walk off she's on crutches at this point and she knows she goes and comforts her mom then she goes back and talks to Rob said can you apologize to her or something and he's like you know I'm not gonna apologize she's um she's upset and she's not gonna listen to me and so you know it seems like she has to be in the middle she's more grown up than these people that are both older than her she has to be the one that stand in the middle so it's crazy that she has to be put in that scenario, but it is what it is. And it's sad that the 24 year old is more grown up than the 33 year old, I believe, and mom. So I don't know if this relationship is going to work out. I am rooting for them, but they've just been a lot of back and forth, like little kids that are dating and not really married. Um, it's just been kind of toxic. Hopefully they can figure things out. They can work things out, but you don't know. You know, sometimes bringing mom in isn't always the best idea. It depends on mom's demeanor. She's not the type of mom that's going to say, hey, let's figure this out. Let's. She's just going to fend for her kid, yell, cuss, be angry. And somebody has to be the grown up in the situation. And we would like the man to step up and do that. But um, it doesn't always work out that way, as we can see with Rob and we've even seen with Ed that, you know, even moms are in danger of their anger and their wrath. I think Ed worse than Rob at this point. Um, all right, guys. Next up, we are talking about Patrick, Thais, John, and and meeting the parents so they're meeting the parents John is there um, and it's funny because John <laughs> he gets he gets a lot of love from uh, Thais's dad it appears but he doesn't know their language he doesn't know Dominican so he doesn't know, have any idea what anybody is saying but you know he called him the loud one but I, I thought it was funny. Everybody likes John for some reason. Like he's a cool, he's a cool guy. And he tells it like it is. Him and Thais both kind of bonded on the fact that Patrick's dad is, you know, trying to get them to pay money to renovate um I think his ranch in order for them to have their birthday party for the baby Elise. So, you know, that situation comes up as the dads meet and Thais's dad um, kind of calls him out on that. I think that's what happens this, this episode. Um, they're going to get more into it next episode, but um, they're both kind of afraid for their parents to meet and see how things are going to go. But the main topic and issue 
is basically Patrick's dad not really standing up and being supportive of his son, just really trying to, in a way, mooch off of his son. And Patrick's argument is that he lost his mom, sadly. So, you know, he's saying, my dad's that's the only parent that I have left, and I want to have a good relationship with him. You know, life is short, all of those things he's feeling, which is understandable. So that's part of his reasoning of trying to trying to stay connected with his dad but he does realize it's kind of unreasonable for them to have to do all of that in order to have the party for his own grandchild um it would be more something that makes more sense for him to kind of give them this for the party for the baby you know that can be the gift for the baby for the baby's birthday but um understanding where Patrick is coming from hoping that everything works out you know maybe Thais's dad will be a little bit more kind to Patrick when he sees his father and how his father treats him you know maybe her dad can be a better father figure who knows how it's going to end up and how it's going to turn out but that's going on with that couple Ashley and Manuel continue to fight about money. Manuel is so upset that she's in $100,000 in debt. He's kind of making fun of her, yet he's asking her for more money. And she's like, you know, I just gave you $1,000 last week. Um, your brother needs $300 for what? He's not being transparent. He's just like, I just need the money. Well, he's giving her such a hard time about spending money and all of that, yet he continues to request and ask for money. And she says, you know, he says, you know, you should be able to help me and my family and, you know, stop paying so much money for all these other things. And she and he ends up saying that she well, I'm sorry. She ends up saying, you know, well, now I'm your family and I'm not your bank. So figure it out. You know, they're at grocery shopping, shopping at the store, which is something that we all have to do. He's fussing with her about money and then asking for her for more money at the same time. Um, it does seem very suspect. I don't like the situation at all, not one bit. And especially he just asked for a thousand bucks. What is that money for? Originally, I remember earlier on, he's saying two or three hundred dollars a month to send to his family, which for a lot of people that is kind of going outside of their budget, but um He's going from a thousand to up to a thousand and now we're needing more. So, you know, it does seem pretty suspect. I don't like the way that this situation and scenario is going. I need to see him put in some work for her in this relationship and stop being to me. He seems like very spoiled. You know, he deserves to get his way and get what he wants. And maybe she does owe a hundred thousand dollars, but you're not helping and what is it that you can do to help the situation besides demand money and talk bad about her spending habits you know as a man how can you step up okay you may not have the financial means but what else can you do to step up for your wife and your family at home like what can you do besides just ask her for money and tell her to give you money and then put her down in the interim so this marriage is not looking fun for Ashley right now. So I hope that everything works out. I hope things are figured out. I hope he, he steps things up with his attitude, at least be more mindful and more caring about her situation, be less demanding with her, be transparent. Because her big issue is, okay, you're asking for this money, but why? I want to know and I need to know, you know, what's going on and why are you asking? for x amount of dollars especially if the money amount keeps changing it'd be, it would be different if it was a consistent amount that he was asking for every month or every week and he never fluctuated but it looks like there's fluctuation and there's always argument and he's always putting her down so that's not somebody i i enjoy being married to but um I hope I see some redeeming qualities in Manuel right now because, you know, I'm not feeling this, this guy's attitude at this moment in time. All right. Finally, with Kobe and Emily, 
and the ex. So they're supposed to be meeting the ex at the beach in his country of Cameroon. But I'm looking here at, um, she, he's saying, well, you know, is he told her to meet at four, it's like 4.30 or something now, and she hasn't shown up. Some other ladies have passed by them, and she's like, is that her, is that her? So she's like, like, where is she? And she's like, well, um, okay, just tell me what's going on, because he's stating well, I told her that, you know, we're going to meet with my wife and all that. She may not be really happy about this scenario, so maybe that's why she didn't come. But if they had broken up in an amicable breakup, then she shouldn't really have an issue with that, should she? But who knows if it was amicable. I just don't like the way Kobe handled this situation because he then tells her, you know, okay, at that time, I was just living my life and having fun. And she feels like, well, if you never got me pregnant, then you may have just continued to live your life and have fun and maybe never married me in the first place. Did you still love her while you were with me? And he was like basically being honest, saying, yeah, I was just having fun. But once um, you got pregnant, I decided to kind of go with this new lifestyle and to be with you. Um, I'm not sure why she feels like um, she needs to know that information. Maybe she just wants to know that his heart wasn't still with someone else while he was with her because she doesn't want to be the person that he just picked because this person got pregnant. Because that's not re That isn't a good foundation to build a relationship and a marriage on. So in a way, I understand where she's coming from. Um, But he basically says, you know, we didn't officially break up till after after you um got pregnant i just texted her and said you know i'm gonna now be a father to this to this new child and start this new family and basically that's just how things ended so i don't know how amicably things ended i don't know what her response was to that she may not have even had a response and he basically said they haven't talked really since that scenario. Um, but I don't, something just seems fishy. And, you know, he was getting really upset and he was like, you know, I hope you don't make everything about this because, you know, I want to enjoy my trip back here in my country and we're going to have our wedding and all this stuff. And it's like, because they're, they've been married in the U.S. but not in Cameroon. So this is a special thing for him and for them but it's like you know he was to me more upset about the situation scenario because i feel like he did have something to hide he knew that he wasn't right in that whole scenario at least he did confess to the fact that he was just living his life having fun and who knows who else was in the picture at that time who knows who else he may have been messing around with we don't know but it seems like he had a lot of his focus on emily and they got pregnant and that's just how things ended up i don't know i would definitely like to see the ex i would would like her to come out of the woodwork if that was even possible i think that would be an entertaining way to see what happens and also for her to get some closure on this situation in this scenario but yeah that's it we're done now with the recap chat for 90 day fiance happily ever after crazy episode um i say there was a few lessons in there with some of these couples uh, we're all about faith love and trends right here on cbiz media so come back and join us as we do more recap chats if you have any thoughts comments questions email me at cbiz tv at yahoo.com that's cbiz tv at tv at yahoo.com Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. All the best and God bless.